I got some bad news. We've got to go to science class in this video. Okay, but the good news is I'm not Professor Mouth Breather that smells like coffee because of his deviated septum. I'm actually here to give you some fun information that you can put into a practical application and hopefully get some good results from. What I'm going to talk about today is how to improve energy at three different levels of the ATP process. Okay, it's a very complex thing, but I'm gonna do my best to put it into a very condensed and somewhat analogy form so that it all makes sense. Because when we look at the body's ability to create energy, it all comes down to ATP, adenosine triphosphate. And we're gonna find out a lot about ATP today, and we're gonna understand exactly how we create energy and how this whole process works. So let's go ahead and let's dive in to some not so nerdy, but fun science. Hey, you are tuned into the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel. New videos every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time, and a bunch of other videos peppered in throughout the week as well. So make sure you hit that little bell button so you can turn on notifications and know whenever I go live or post a new video. So let's go ahead and let's dive in. So we have to start with an ATP overview. A lot of you might know what ATP is, but a lot of you may not. See, ATP is simply adenosine triphosphate. The simplest way to put it is it is exactly what gives us energy. Every blink of the eye, every breath you take, every single movement, micro movement, nano movement involves ATP. It involves this adenosine triphosphate. Okay, so for this to occur, we need mitochondria. Now you see a lot of my videos, I talk about mitochondrial efficiency, mitochondrial machinery, and all this and that. Basically all mitochondria is, is a factory in which ATP is created or synthesized. So we want to have efficient factories. So when we look at the entire efficiency process of creating energy and oxidative phosphorylation, it can be broken down into three very simple phases of ATP flux and phosphorylation. So the first phase is what's called the electron transport chain. I'm not even going to begin to go down that rabbit hole because the electron transport chain, in my opinion, is fairly complex and is never described super, super well. But the electron transport chain sets the pace for oxidation. So the electron transport chain, or phase one, is all about getting more mitochondria or improving your mitochondrial density. To put into analogy, it's about building a better factory, building a bigger factory. The bigger the factory, the better the output. Then we go ahead and we talk about phase two, which is known as the ATP coupling phase. It's where we have the whole ATP interaction with oxygen and all that, it's the efficiency process. Okay, so now we've built a big factory first, but now we want that factory to be efficient. Okay. More so, we want to dive deeper to that. We want, does that factory have happy employees? Are they rested? Are they performing well? It's every operation of the factory inside that mitochondria, right? So phase one is building the factory. How much factory space do we have? Phase two, or step two, is about the efficiency and how that factory operates. So then we go into phase three, or step three, which is actual energy production, or ATP synthesis itself. This is very, very important, because this is the actual production. Factory size, happiness of the factory, and the overall output. What are you actually creating? And this involves, of course, the ADP to ATP synthesis, that whole process, which I'll explain in a little bit more detail here in just a second. So I'm gonna give you tangible ways to improve each and every one of these steps because they are inflection points. And if we improve one step, we can change the direction and the magnitude of energy because they're so malleable. So if we improve step one, then step two dramatically improves. And if we improve step two, then we improve step three just by default. Now I know it sounds a lot of craziness, but trust me, it will start to make some sense. So step one, the electron transport chain and exercise, creating the bigger mitochondrial house, creating the bigger factory. So one thing that we know is that our respiratory capacity improves with exercise. So the more that we do cardio, the more that we improve our respiratory rate, the more that we have oxygen uptake and we have just the ability to kind of cope with that. So basically our uptake rate of oxygen is closely related to our maximum energy output. It really is. So the Journal of Applied Physiology actually published a study. It was pretty interesting. They took eight weeks of endurance training. And what they found is that after eight weeks, they had a pretty darn big increase in mitochondrial density, but also power. So here's what's interesting is most people think that when you just do cardio, you're only improving your endurance work. Well, that may be true because you improve your VO2 max, but you actually have a secondary improvement in terms of ATP production because you actually improve your mitochondria. You get more blood flow, so you get bigger, better mitochondria. So what the study found was that with just a 14% increase in VO2 max, there was a subsequent 40% increase in overall mitochondrial density. So just by doing a little extra cardio and pushing the limits a little bit and getting that cardio burn and doing your HIIT training and things like that, you actually improve the ability to be stronger and better and faster in other facets of your training. So a little bit of extra cardio that you may normally skip on is actually gonna make your bench better and it's gonna make your squat better and it's gonna make you perform better and sprint faster, literally. 
not just any kind of weird nonsense. Okay, so add your cardio, don't skip it, don't be afraid of it. Okay, then we go into step two. Step two is the coupling process. So this is the whole process of efficiency, right? So you have the factory built, you did your cardio, you had your bigger factory. Now we want good workers in there. We want a lot of workers that are happy to be there. It's cram packed, producing a lot of energy. And it's the whole process of association with oxygen. So one of the best ways that you can improve that is simply by getting dietary nitrates in. Now, one of the ways that you can do that is through like concentrated beet juice, things like that. And I know a lot of you are probably on a low carb diet, so you may not want to totally consume a ton of beet juice, but you can get beet juice concentrate. You can find it online, things like that, pretty easy. What the dietary nitrate is going to do is it's going to increase oxygen availability, which improves phosphocreatine synthesis. So this whole process means you're improving the amount of oxygen that's getting in there, the amount of basically new energy flow or new employee flow for this factory, right? So you're getting more and more employees coming in that are doing more and more good work and therefore increasing the output. So that's a simple one to fix there. Then we go into step three. How can you actually improve the ATV production itself? What is coming out of the factory in the way of energy? We built the big factory, we have the workers, and now we actually wanna see the fruits of our labor. We wanna see that energy production. So this whole process is known as oxidative phosphorylation. Let me break it down very simply. You have ATP, adenosine triphosphate. There's three phosphate molecules. When you start to produce energy, you cleave off one of the phosphate molecules and you're left with ADP, adenosine diphosphate. Well, in order to get energy back, you have to have phosphorylation, the addition of a phosphate molecule back to the ADP. So the ADP or the ATP turns into ADP, then we turn it back into ATP. And that process is very, very small, but very important. And what happens is we have a specific feedback mechanism within our bodies. Every time ATP turns into ADP, we have a system that tells our brain or tells our body, hey, this just occurred, we need to add this phosphate molecule. Now, we're talking about efficiency down to the nanosecond. So we want sensitivity, we want our body to know the nanosecond, the nano, 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 nanosecond that that energy is being used so that it can replace it. Well, one of the best ways that you could do that is of course by training, but also by adding the right omega-3s in. So here's where it gets interesting. The Journal of Physiology actually found that just supplementing two grams of EPA, eicosapentaenoic acid, and one gram of docosahexaenoic acid, DHA, simple omega-3s, made a huge difference, up to 450% in the overall omega-3 content within that mitochondria. So what that means is that you ended up having more ability to have that ADP, ATP sensitivity. Super, super critical. So simply by adding omega-3s, you made it less inflammatory, made it a more sensitive process so the body could create more energy faster. So now, to put it all together, we have a big factory with lots of happy employees that do a really good job. They have all the tools necessary to do their job efficiently, so they produce a lot of power. Now the interesting thing is, of course you can add your omegas there, but when you look at the big picture of things, there's some other things that you can do. One of my favorite ways, just to sort of biohack, and this really comes down to the brain a lot because the brain uses ATP too, is utilizing cordyceps. So cordyceps is a specific kind of mushroom, and you see it in a lot of coffees and elixirs and things like that. Cool thing is cordyceps has been shown, and actually published in a study by the journal Life Sciences, to improve ATP production by 32%. And a lot of it works within that electron transport chain ecosystem. So remember how I was talking about doing extra cardio to improve the factory size? Well, cordyceps are shown to do that. They improve that mitochondrial density. That's why you actually get fired up and you feel so smart when you take cordyceps, because it's very efficient. You feel it in the brain more than anything. But long term, you can feel it in the body too. Now, those of you that know my channel know that I'm a huge fan of Four Sigmatic. They offer these things. They have cordyceps. They have lion's mane. They all have them in awesome coffee elixirs and things like that that you can taste. Super, super awesome. So go ahead and click on the link down in the description. You can give them a shot. Special discounts for all my fans, all my subscribers. So just make sure you check them out. They're also a huge sponsor of this channel and make everything like this possible. So between all these things, you've got cordyceps, again, down in the link in the description. You've got omega-3s. I don't even care what brand you use at this point. It's just a matter of using them. Okay, little bits of nitrates. Okay, so we're talking about like beet juice, things like that, possibly even an NO2 supplement. And then adding your cardio. Don't skip on your cardio. This alone is going to have a huge effect and sort of a butterfly effect on your overall energy, your overall metabolism, and your ability to ultimately burn fat long-term too. So I apologize for the sciencey video. I know some of you out there really got the grasp of this, and I know some of you, it might've just been a little bit too crazy. I promise I'll break it down better in other videos as we go along. But until then, thank you for tuning in. I'll see you in the next video.